Okay, Shalom, Shalom, Kwam Yasha Allah, Koholoyim La, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim, Makahahudash. Double honors to our apostles, elders of Great Millstone, who rule well, and that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. Just want to say, Thawada to all you Akim and Akwaf that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushai, to the best of their ability. This is Yah Hanan Nawaf, just coming at you with another quick, quick lesson. Praying that it's edifying by the spirit. Just a little uh brush up. This is um Politico. It says US to Hezbollah. Don't count on us to stop an Israeli attack. So hey, things are brewing, man. It's just a part of a hey, one of the biggest parts of these end days prophecies right here. And you know I know it gets uh repetitious, but we got a report on it. US officials trying to prevent a bigger Middle East war are issuing an unusual warning to Hezbollah. Don't assume that Washington can stop Israel from attacking you. The American message is designed to get the Lebanese-backed Shiite militia to back down and de-escalate the brewing crisis along the Israeli-Lebanese border. A person familiar with the discussion said, the blunt message comes as many U.S. officials appear resigned to the possibility that Israel will make a major move against Hezbollah inside Lebanon in the coming weeks. Hey Amen. Two U.S. officials told Politico that the militia needs to also understand that Washington will help Israel defend itself if Hezbollah retaliates. <laughs> hey Amen. They stressed that the militant group should not count on America to act as a break on Israeli decision making. The message is being conveyed indirectly the person said the U.S. doesn't engage Hezbollah one on one because it is a, a designated terrorist organization and it relies on public communications or intermediaries. U.S. Special Envoy Amos Hotstein and other American officials have traveled to the region in re uh, recent days to reign in both sides, even as there's a growing sense in Washington and beyond that escalation is. In, in, inevitable so hey next step <laughs> next step in this thing well let me grab this one quick scripture real quick what is that uh yeah man things heating up jeremiah 49 a little highlight on this and 20 therefore hear the counsel of the Lord Yahweh that he hath taken against Edom and his purposes that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Timon surely the least of the flock shall draw them out surely he shall make their in their habitation desolate with them and the least of the flock man is Israel man he's those those Edomites that's in um, Israel man they're gonna draw the US into some bullshit then it's just going, you know, the rest going to get popping. And again, you know, I always like to mention that with these types of things right here that's going on. This that MOTB got to be close. It's got to be close, man. And we don't know how long, you know, um, certain things like this, you know, going to last. But it only takes one little one little thing, man. And, and, and it's full fledged, you know all out war in this bad boy man so they're gonna have to come you know they're gonna have to come with that that thing thing soon man so let's get um matter of fact let's go back let's see what else they talking about in here real quick they say israel's got to do what they got to do a defense department official said having been granted a nominee like others to speak frankly Israel and Hezbollah have been clashing at the low level for months with exchanges of fire and targeted killings that um, arose when Hamas militants attacked Israel on October 7th and spurred an ongoing Israeli retaliation in the Gaza Strip. The Hezbollah-Israel clashes have spiraled to new heights in recent weeks as Israel's war against Hamas has fallen in intensity. U.S. officials fear that the full-blown battle between Israel and Hezbollah, which, like Hamas, is backed by Iran, 
but his stronger and better arm could tip the region into an all-out war. I just said that. That's a scenario they've sought to prevent since the israel Hamas war erupted last October. We think there ought to be a diplomatic resolution to the conflict across the Israeli-Lebanon border that is keeping tens of thousands of families on each side of the border from returning to their homes. Okay. Spokesperson for the State Department and White House National Security Council did not immediately respond to requests for comment or on the messaging to Hezbollah. Israeli Defense Minister Yob Gallant is in, is in Washington for talks with aides to, to President Joe Biden, and much of the discussion is likely to focus on the crisis along the Israeli Lebanese border. The two U.S. officials said the Biden administration will help Israel defend himself, see, defend itself in any scenario with Hezbollah, including everything from replenishing Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system to providing intelligence if Israel comes under severe duress. With Hezbollah raining rockets and missiles on its major cities, for instance, the U.S. may move towards more direct military support. The Israeli leaders do not appear to have made a final decision on what to do, though none of them, but none seems to want an all-out war, and neither does Iran, the two U.S. Um, officials said. When it comes to discussions with the Israelis, the focus is on injecting reality into Bibi's calculation. A separate senior U.S. official said, using a nickname for um, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the U.S. intelligence community believes that Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah doesn't want a war, but assesses that the risk of one is heightened this month, as is the risk of a miscalculation on either side. Yeah, man, that's all it's going to take. 144.2, baby. Yep, that's what I'm talking about right there. Israeli um, military forces are wary after months of war in Gaza where fighting is far from finished, but in conversations with the U.S. officials, Israeli leaders have made compelling arguments for why they need to strike Hezbollah sooner rather than later. So they're ready to get down, man. For example, moves by Hezbollah in the immediate wake of Hamas' October 7 attack led Israel to evaluate many communities near its border with Lebanon. The loss of that population has undermined the integrity of Israel's control along that border. A sensitive issue for a country worried about territorial security. Okay, man. Hey. Uh, what else they got here? Israel wants the displaced families to be able to return home before the fall. Otherwise, they will likely enroll their children in schools where they are now, putting down new roots. But if Israel strikes Hezbollah, and the militant group fights back in a way that forces even more rounds of fighting. Additional Israelis in the area could be displaced. The Israelis have um, argued that if the U.S. publicly supports them in an operation, even just backing the threat, then Hezbollah may be more likely to back down or agree to a ceasefire now. Hey, yeah, all right, well... Yeah, things about to get grimy out here, man. We definitely are living in some really very serious times. Let's get this um Revelation 11 and 14. This second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. That third woe, man, that, that third world's war. So again, you know, a hey, Revelation 13, 16 got to be kicking in at some point in the game. For all this, you know, this full blown all out World War Three thing happens, man. And they in the making of it, man. They got a, it's a lot going on behind the scenes, man. Esau is really setting up, man, to um, cause let's get this real quick. Um, chapter twelve right here. Revelation twelve and twelve. Therefore rejoice ye heavens. And ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. See, he, he knows that he has but a short time. That's the reason why everything, you know, is, is starting to rile up. Man, and, you know, 
with this 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 B flu, the Popeye's chicken thing. Um, I done a lesson on that earlier. Where they 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 they, they didn't kill you know millions of um, birds, cold you know millions of um, animals. You know what I'm saying? And they they're talking about how you know this thing thing is you know jumping from animals. It's them you know them jumped into humans. You know it's them you know so you just never know how this man is gonna get down. We don't know exactly how it's gonna come. We just know that it's gonna it's gonna happen, man. Second Corinthians two and eleven, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We're not ignorant of the, this man been running the same playbook for a long time, man. People don't caught on to it, but it works for him, so he, <laughs> he continues to run it, man. I mean, you know, cause he's in control. The earth is giving you know that not um, Job nine and twenty four. Talks about how the earth is giving it to the hand of the wicked. So he's in control of the media. He's in control of um um and whether or not you believe him or not, they don't care no more. You know what I'm saying? They just doing what they want to do, man, right in your face. Full <laughs> full blown, right in your face, man. You know it's some bull. But they doing it right in your face because they know that the people don't have no might or no power to actually stop them. This is Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof, if not wearing who is he? See, this man is in control of, of the earth, man. He's been sanctioning people. Now, here you go. You got, he, they dealing with Russia with the Ukraine thing. They dealing with China with the Taiwan thing. They dealing with, um, you know, North Korea, you know, and all these. Uh, uh, America just spread too thin, man. They dealing with Israel with this Gaza. Now, Hezbollah. Now, you know, Iran. Come on, bro. How long you think this this thing is about to keep on pushing, man? How, but Esau <laughs> is just shooting itself in the foot, man. And um, what's that one? Um, Salakia. Uh, what is it? Uh, is it Isaiah? Yeah, Isaiah nine and five. Let me put a highlight on that too. It says, for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Yeah, that's, yeah, this going to be, uh, and, you know, this is going to be some, some thermal nuclear, you know, because that's all they're talking about. All you've been hearing about the past um, year or the past six months or so, you know. Going into July, seven months of the year, done passed through like nothing. Shit seemed like a week. And so, and all they've been talking about is nuclear this, nuclear that. As a matter of fact, let's go into um, Matthew. Because this is what the Lord was talking about right here. When the disciples asked him what would be happening in the end days. Matthew 24, let me start at verse 3 here. It says, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Yahweh Shai, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus. His name is not Jesus. The letter J was invented in 1524, 500 years ago. No one was calling no Jesus, calling on no name Jesus when um, the Lord walked the earth, man. They was calling him by the name that Gabriel gave them to call him, Yahweh Shai, which means he's a savior, the savior or deliverer. In the Paleo Hebrew, and the true name of the Father is Yahweh, which means that He exists with the existing one. And it says, And Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am um, the Messiah or the Mashiach, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Because, you know, again, that MOTB, that thing got to jump off too. It says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So, yeah, you know, things is things are starting to heat up, man. Things are starting to heat up. We definitely in some um, some very interesting times. And man, I tell you, boy, it's about to get real serious out here. It's about to be real serious out here soon, man. And so, you know, hey, continue on praying to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that you are counted worthy enough 
to make it through all the things that are to come to pass and account it worthy enough to stand before the Son of Man, Yahweh Shai, according to Luke 21 and 36. And just continue praying, man. And, and the Lord said he was going to shorten the time. Let me see what's that scripture. Uh, it's Lockyer. Yeah. Oh, it might be Salakia. Yeah, Salakia. I was right, right there. It was verse 22. Matthew 24 and 22. And except those days should be shortened. Yeah, I was spelling it wrong. There should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And again, Esau know that he has but a short time. You know, so he's going to get down, man. He's about to come real, real cold, real hardcore. He's about to buckle in. He's about to really buckle down on the civilians, man. And I um I done a um a little uh video last night, a lesson last night, um redacted. I think it was the show I think I was watching. And this guy, he was talking about how in all 50 states they're building these big ass facilities. And the lady was like, you know, they was pretty much man for uh, what they say um civilian dissidents. So hey, you know, hey Esau ready to he ready the plan is already set. That shit is already set. You, 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 <laughs> you know. So again, we had to be prepared and ready mentally. Most definitely have faith above all things, pretty much. <laughs> mercy. You know, we're praying to you. How about Shimia Shah for mercy? We don't know our lot. Some of us are gonna be caught up. Some gonna be living out of dang on backpack. Some gonna be living out of a truck, car, whatever. You might be moving from spot to spot. Some are gonna be beheaded. We don't know our lot, but the Lord is going to place the spirit on us to handle if you're, you're if you're a part of the elect, man. You know, and we're praying that we're a part of the hopeful elect. So I'm going to end out there. I pray that this lesson was edifying with that. Kwame Shalom.